you learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. God cannot give me a cheat for a wife because he knows if he does that, I'll be destabilized in this kingdom mandate. And he knows he needs me so very much to make the kingdom a better place. So people who are doing kingdom mandate, he's always particular about them. People who are doing kingdom work, he's always particular about them. God knows that I need a car to move from one nation to the other. He knows I need visa to fly across countries. He knows. Because he knows if I enter a nation now, I'm going to reap harvest for him there. So he knows. He's going to facilitate my own faster than the one who is going to immigration office because he has a selfish motive for leaving Nigeria. There are some people who are not looking for visa. Visa is looking for them. People who are not looking for money again. Money is now looking for them. A woman asked me a very, very... <laughs> she said, Pastor, Biko, can you can again? Amen. You know when they talk like that, you know something is about to... When you hear that, Biko, can you can again? Just prepare your mind for the... Oh, if you also in the Now, bro... So, Pastor Rikini, amen. I said, Mbama, away for us on name, if any men name for kingdom, he said, Oh, our kingdom, I said, That is it. That's the whole essence of life for them. Our kingdom, is it kingdom that gives you food, that gives you clothes and cars and all that? How much do you make from it? And I shocked the woman. I said, Madam, can I tell you something? I know you are a senior, senior, senior. You have worked in this service for 34 years. You have one year to resign or so. To retire. He said, you have worked here for this number of years. He said, let me shock you. I know your salary is quite high. But your salary put together for six months eh, does not equal my income for one month. The woman said, eh? I said, yes, it's as bad as that. He said, yes. That's the situation. I'm sorry, I can't help it. He said, really? He said, that's the case. Then it means some of us will have to be thinking of opening church. Oh. I said, you now see the motive again. And one man who doesn't know about clothes, start mentioning all your Spencer and all your TM and all that. I think TM is the only one I know so far. And one man who enters my wardrobe for a whole year, I can use one shirt and I'm not detached. You know me very well by now. You know, this man's pursuit is not in food and clothes and drinks and all that. I long past that stage. If it's money I'm looking for in this service, hey, yeah, yeah. But there's something higher. I'm hooking up to. If you hook up to it, everything you want will be added. I said, without you even knowing it, without your permission, God knows, He knows, He look, He that takes care of the sparrows, He that takes care of the flowers, the flowers that bought in the day and in the night they have disappeared. He that knows how to take care of the birds, take care of the green grass of the field. How much more you, who is made in his image and likeness, will he not also take care of you? He knows your need. He knows your desire. I have needs as a person. A lot of needs. Emotional needs. Psych- uh, physiological needs. Material needs. I have needs. But as I hook up to God's divine mandate, I know God is going to supply all those needs according to His riches in glory. You think God is not real? He is real. Some of you think God is... God does, God, God does not really exist. God is one mystery we created out of our mind. 
So you better fend for yourself because he's gone. He's too busy. He doesn't know. The Bible says all the hair on your head, they are numbered. It doesn't mean God knows all the numbers or knows the numbers of your head. What it means is that God knows the number of every strand of your head. So God can come on your head now and pick one. And look at it. 2,330. He knows the number. That means your hair are numbered. Just like one, two, number three, number four. He won't make a mistake if he comes here. Number 17. He knows the number of your hair. How many of you can count the numbers of your hair? God is so mindful of you to a point that he knows. So what makes you think he's not mindful enough to give you a car? What is car? What is house? All you expect is hook up. Young, old, small, big, whatever you think you are. Your commitment this end times will be, Lord, show me the spots where I can do your work. I wish decree could solve the problem of Nigeria. All the decrees we have amassed would have solved it. It's too much. There's one work we didn't do. The kingdom work. That's why we are ripping this nonsense. We went to school and got degree, got PhD, got professorship. Look at where we are. Professors are running. I had a professor to a particular, you know, to speak to the professor about the particular initiative I'm running now, the new Nigeria initiative. And the guy told me, he said, Rev, hey, this thing you are doing, grace to you. I've lost hope in Nigeria. A prof. And a prof of political science to make matters even worse. I've spoken with lawyers. Most of your SAS are not talking in this country. Where are they? Where are those SAS, senior advocate of Nigeria? Where are they? Where are those human rights activists? Where are they? Kebano, where are they? Since your judges they are even looking for now, they are DSS all over the place. I like what these pastors in Jos did though, when they came for Isaiah Buga. DSS came now. Pastors went and blocked. Did he touch our own? You can't touch. I like that spirit. In the east, don't you open up? To your tents, O oh, evil men. Well, I don't, I have legions of angels. If they come here now to collect me, are you here? They are trying to collect pastor. You will become ex pristine Hills member. You won't stick out your neck. No. Touch my pastor. Now lie. It's me you will carry. It's not him. Who is? Because the eastern part of Nigeria and even the southern is void of army. Void of a militia. Void of an organized army. All of you are individualistic, running your own agenda and purpose. You only know Pastor Prince on Sunday morning. But you don't know, see the kind of body my pastor is carrying. See the load on this man's shoulders. See the, the magnitude of what this man wants to do. Lord, what role do I play? Even if I don't talk like he's talking, can I play the role of protecting this man? Can I uphold this man in prayers? Can I uphold this man with my substance, my resources? Can I uphold this man with my encouragement? Can I uphold this man with my availability? If people can uphold them, they can. Motor spare part dealers, mechanics, keke riders, or kind of riders, they believe in that thing he's doing. How much more a kingdom mandate? Can't you rally around it? Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 a few things on the kingdom you know we, 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 we are going to deal with kingdom the whole of this year that's the plan To let's put our house back in order put, put our lives back on track And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. Hear what the man was doing. Preaching the gospel of what? The kingdom. 
and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That means before Jesus came there was another kind of gospel the people were hearing. There was another kind of gospel the people were listening to. There was another kind of gospel the people had. And that gospel could not change that time. There was need for another gospel to be preached. It's called the gospel of the kingdom. The problem of the end time church, the mistake the church of Jesus has made over the years, is that we preached the gospel of Jesus. We didn't preach the gospel Jesus preached. When Jesus was here, what do you think he was preaching? I am Jesus, the son of God, who wants to die on the cross for you. Now you have to believe in me, because I'm soon going to go and hang on the tree. If I die and spill my blood, anyone who believes you will go to heaven. So I want you to all repent from your sin and now begin to believe in me. So that when I die, you will follow me to heaven. No. Is that what he was preaching? Jesus did not preach Jesus. Jesus preached the kingdom. It was after the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus and his ascension that the gospel of Jesus was preached. So there's another kind of message, Jesus, after you have experienced a new birth, after you now know I'm a new creation, washed by the precious blood of Jesus, the next thing now is, God, what can I do in this kingdom for you? I believe none of you here who have a job, go to your office to do your bidding. How many of you do that? You just got employment letter. In a bank or in civil service. Then you appear in the bank the following morning. Just sit down on the chair. Ah, thank you manager. Thank you MD. For this wonderful job I have. Oh, glory to God. After a while you reach out for Pepsi from your fridge and drink. Your computer is just lying there looking at you. Your files are looking at you. Don't, the pens are there looking at you. You keep doing that every month. And you expect your MD to give you salary. How many of you do that? Which company employs such a man? The moment you have been employed into that bank or industry, the next thing is to begin to find out what your job description in that company is. Is that correct? So if you are a clerk, you must know the job of a clerk. If you are um, a salesman, you must know the job of a salesman. And you are to do that job because that is the only way you are guaranteed salary. That's the same way in the kingdom of God, salvation is recruitment. We ended Christianity at the salvation phase only. Now that you are saved, glory to God, I'm a candidate of heaven. Heavenly race, I know God tired. Who gave you that job? Heavenly race, I know God tired. Heavenly race, I know God tired. Until I see my God. You are singing it, but we don't even see the race you are running. What 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 race? That's what we do. We just come in at the entrance phase, salvation, and we pitch our tent there and sit down, born again, waiting for Jesus to come so he can go to heaven and do what? And go and collect crown. Who will crown you for job not done? I will use your scriptures to show you things this morning in the next twenty minutes, and I close you. Who wants to give you that? that job when he knows you wouldn't deliver salvation is recruitment you just got employment letter into this kingdom but the moment you enter the kingdom the next thing is what is the job description what is the job description what is my job here in most companies if not all you see to get you to fit in into the job required of you to do in that company, they organize trainings. Is that correct? They organize trainings. Staff training. 
maybe they send you to Lagos or they bring in some consultants to come and teach you on how to talk to people, customer care relations, public relations, you know, human resource, all of all those things, they teach you. They bring in these guys to train you so you can do what? Fit in properly. That is the same way the church of Jesus should be organized. Once people get admission or employment into this kingdom, they have to be processed. They have to be trained so they can fit in properly to their job specifications. That's why we put schools in the church. For instance, one have just started again. Schools are running in church now, but there are people who think their academic is more important, their job is more important. It can't help this country, sir. There is a curriculum God gave us to help this nation. It's the Bible. It can never be in your classroom. Even nations we admire, world power, nations that have become developed nations, like Britain, Great Britain, UK, Queen Elizabeth, told America, the guys who came to seek for mentorship on how to build America, when they founded America. He told them, she told them, he said, my father told me, the secret for building nation is the Bible. He said, is this Bible? You know this, your King James Version was actually translated into English by a, a royal majesty. Not a pastor. Not a priest. It was a king that translated your Bible. His name is King James. And King James is the father of Queen Elizabeth. That was the king of England. So, Great Britain believed so much in the scriptures. Queen Elizabeth told the delegates who came from America to get mentorship on how to build America. He said, if you want to build your nation, the secret is the Bible. I define the Bible as basic instructions, but lightly engaged. That's why nations reap what they reap. Of course, when the woman was done with them, they went back to America and they started charting the course for the emergence of that nation. The first thing they developed was the motto of the country. And the motto, in God we trust. How can a country build her whole nation on a motto that deals with God? In God we trust. Go and look at the writings of every country. Look at the writings of nations. Like even like, for instance, you will see inscriptions. You see inscriptions like faith, unity, progress. Those inscriptions are biblical. Hello? Read your national anthem as a country. Bible terms. Arise, O oh compatriot. Have you not seen arise in your Bible? Nigeria call, obey. Have you not seen obedience in your Bible? To serve. Have you not seen service in your Bible? Our fatherland. Have you not seen fatherland in the Bible? With love. Have you not seen love in the Bible? Where did they come from? Strength. Where do you see strength from? Faith. One nation bound. Have you not seen the word nation in your Bible? In freedom, peace, and unity. That is the Bible. So how do you build a nation? You don't build it on philosophical, human philosophical dogmas. You build nations on scriptures. You build it on the Bible. And America was built. Read the motos, read the national anthems, read the pledge. I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful. Have you not seen faithfulness in your Bible? Loyal and honest. So we can raise a country that has loyal people, faithful people, honest people, by teaching them Bible. There is honesty in the Bible. If we teach our country honesty, we will wipe out corruption. Teach them loyalty. Teach them faithfulness. Teach them love. You will wipe out this intolerable attitude you put up onto for one another. 
teach them peace it's in the bible of course who is the architect of peace who is the source of peace peace does not come from the mountains it does not come from the rivers it does not come from america it doesn't come from abroad peace comes from the prince of peace he's called the prince of peace So we did church at just one level. Salvation. You are now born again. New creation. Washed by the blood of Jesus. He ended there. We didn't process them. We didn't disciple them. Do you know in church you should be taught patriotism? What is patriotism? Patriotism is just a nationalistic name used to embellish the real name that it is called. What is the real name? The real name is selflessness. He said, patriotism is selfless service. That's what patriotism is. Selfless service. Okay. I know there are some of you who are coming from Egypt. So, I have to take it easy. Some of you are coming from the Moses' kind of church. The Peter church. Where you were locked at the first phase. Hmm? I know where you're coming from. Coming from where? But when you leave from that place, you are more confused. Because they didn't put you through discipleship. Every day you go to the confession. Pastor, I have sinned again. I took alcohol. You might say, go and say no more. He didn't teach you destiny. You know one of the problems of this country is religion. I, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Protestant. I'm an Orthodox. I'm a this. I'm a that. See your problem. Do you know what we are doing here? It has nothing to do with religion. Priestly Hills is not a religious organization. It's not even categorized. Your government can't even categorize us as a religious organization. That's why I don't do religious activities here. We are facing real issues the way they are. Hmm. <sighs> Practical step by step things that we have to do to bring about the kingdom, to invade the kingdom in all the nations of the world. It's possible. You don't need to be a pastor like me. That little stair where you are is your parish. Another parable he puts forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Follow, I want to show you something here. But why men slept? I want you to notice how he talks about this thing. He keeps pointing. You see, the kingdom of God is like. Go back to 24. Let's start it again. I want you to follow it very well. Look at the screen. Another parable he put forth to them. Jesus was teaching. Saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Quickly, oh. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tithes also appeared. I don't know if you understand what I'm teaching you here. When the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tithes also appeared. So can I shock you? Heads men were sown, my men slept. Terrorism was sown, why men slept. And when the grain has sprouted and produced a crop, then the task also appeared. Yes, the next is. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Huh. How then does it have tasks? Are there no Christians in Nigeria? 
How then do we have tars here? Jesus, did you not sow good seeds in this field? God, did you not sow good seeds in Nigeria? How then these stars? The seed, verse 28. He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go up and gather them up? Verse 29. But he said, No. Lest why you gather up the tires, you also uproot the wheat with them. Yes. Verse 30. Let both grow together until they watch. Until the what? He said, let's both grow together. I want to help you understand it. Should we go and gather up the tars and burn them? He said, no. Allow the tars to grow because they were sown. They have now grown. But this is what you must do if we must correct the problem. As the tars are growing, you too be growing. He said, let both grow together until what time? Until the time of harvest. You lose harvest when there are no men to reap it. Let both grow together. That means it doesn't matter what is happening in your country. Church, sit down and grow the reapers. Sit down and grow the harvesters. Sit down and disciple the agents of change. That is what it means to grow both of them. Don't have a problem with the uh, let the headsmen be killing. Let the terrorists be killing. But what is the church doing? Is this the problem of the church? Hey, Boko Haram. Hey, headsmen. Hey. Then the only thing the church has ever known how to do. Let us pray on oh, 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 the 23rd of this month is prayer and fasting. Standing on the WhatsApp. But they declare night with G. Rama, mama, mama, mama. And God is ever looking at them. Let me tell you something. The purpose of prayer is to receive divine direction from God so we can have divine or make divine intervention. God does not do divine intervention. Go and read your Bible. He does not intervene, He only directs. It is men who intervene. <laughs> oh, you need to know how I've grown. No, oh, I'm no longer in this your children's bread level. I've long grown. I make, I make, I'm a general in the kingdom, my friend. I've grown beyond this. Your give me, give me bread, daily bread. I've grown beyond it. I am living at the level of God now. And it didn't come overnight. You need to know the trainings, the discipleship, the mentorship, the training. As you pursue other affairs and your agendas in life, please, sir and ma, can I beg you, pursue the affair of the kingdom. As you get training for your bank, as you get training for your career, as you get training for your, 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 your school, law, medicine, whatever it may be, do not carry all your eggs and put in that sinking sand. Monday to Friday, you are in classroom. But you don't know Saturday. Foundation school, maturity school, discipleship school. I don't know. You don't attend it. It's not your business. That's the devil blindfolding you. You think you know the Bible already. You don't know this Bible is a textbook. You think you know it. You need someone to teach you. Philip, as a eunuch, understand that's what you are reading. He said, how can I understand? Except somebody teach me. Even Jesus went into the temple, sat down, was hearing Pharisees, hearing the synagogue, the men in the synagogue teaching. The Bible says he was asking questions. He was not teaching. He was not contributing. He was asking. That means he was learning something. And the people who were talking were amazed at the intelligence of his question. They wonder what manner of 12 year old boy is this? Do you claim that you know the Bible already? Yeah, this my teacher from the Bible that you'll be your head will scatter. This thing I do on Sunday morning is just to see how I can I step down, step down. It's like stepping down transformer. So we can charge your phone. If you carry your phone and go and put on the transformer, it will blow both you and the phone. 
So they have to step it down, step it down, bring high tension, step it down to small, small ML cables and then channel it through your, you know. If you know the art of transformer that you are able to harness in this building, you know transformer is a very deadly thing. You just put the insulators and push some things that can step it down, step down. So that's what I do as well as sometimes. I just step down, step, 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 step. I look at them, I say, okay, can I give them children's milk? This is what I'm doing, children's milk is what I'm teaching you. You go through school, through training, you start cracking bones. You start seeing your destiny. So you don't live through this life and, and just end up in one man's house as a housewife. Or just end up in one company as a salesboy. Nobody can employ me. Are you aware of that? I am so trained that people like me, if I go to look for a job, they will tell me before I enter the gate, Sir, don't come in, no vacancy. You know why? Not because I'm not relevant. Because they know you can't pay me. Your bank can't pay me, sir. Your bank can't pay me. If I come there, I'm coming with not just attitude. I'm coming with a lot of aptitude. The skills are available at my hand. I put you through banking things here, you'll be wondering. Did this man ever work in a bank? Can't pay me. But it's a kingdom that pays better. Do your bank. Do your career. Nobody says you should leave it. No, that's what we're talking about. But as you go through those ones, there is another kingdom. You're going through NYC. There's KYSC. National Youth Corps. There's Kingdom Youth Corps. As you go through your law, there is another law. This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth. What are you telling me? Whatever it is you go through, there is another school you have to go to if you become useful in nation, in this nation. So, can, can I finish up? I'm sorry for time's sake. Let them grow, gather, okay, grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first, gather together the tars and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, now, uh, verse 36. I want to show you the explanation of that quickly. Same verse, the same chapter, verse 36. Okay. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. Then he was talking to the multitude. But now see. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the task of the field. Then see the explanation. Verse 27. Mm. He answered and said to them, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. Verse 28. The field is the word. Not, not the word as in the word of God. The word of people. The field is the word. The field is Nigeria. It's in your Bible I'm reading from. Not encyclopedia, not dictionary. The field is your nation. So God shows good seeds here. And when we sleep, the enemy comes and sows his what? Own tasks. That's why in Nigeria, you see, the good seeds, the evil seeds. Wondering with all the Christians here, how come these idiots are rising up here? These Egyptians. Now look at what he said. He said, the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tars are the sons of the wicked one. Now don't forget how they came about when men slept. So now you can begin to see that you don't blame all these issues going on in Nigeria on governmental. You blame it on the men who should have been keeping watch. The opposite of sleep is to watch. You so say why men slept? We left watching and we entered sleeping. We're coming to church. Singing Kuaraya Kamarama. Singing Imotua. Imotua. Ige Ketale Zechika. I don't know what you are. We don't know what you are. Imotua. 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 Eh. Repijon. How does Imotua now make you Ketale Zechika? Imotua. Imotua. The way you finish you're not in your time. Your style. Imotua. 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 Eh. After that, we change. 
how does it change your nation? If I can't you sing that song here? Is someone hear what I'm saying? How does it change your country? Imo Twa is in discipleship school. That's what we teach you. Imo Twa in government. Imo Twa in economy is discipleship school that does it. Training. He said the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. The bad seeds are the sons of the wicked. Those are the tasks. And that's what we are reaping today. Because we did not discipline ourselves to prepare for this war coming. Most of these guys who are perpetrating wickedness all over the places, perhaps are people who should have been used in one way or the other to make the kingdom a better place. A guy who can carry gun and fire people has potential for preaching the gospel. Are you aware of that? We did not see them as people with potential for the gospel. We saw them as just full and amen, Islamist men and all that. If we saw that this man also had the seed of destiny in them, all these things you see these guys doing are simply a reaction of destiny. Most of these guys who are killing, invading places, are only telling you indirectly there is a seed of greatness, a seed to do exploit, naturally planted and embedded inside of me. But, wrong channeling. No mentorship, no discipleship. The enemy came and sold in task. A few more scriptures and I close. Matthew chapter 16 verse 13. Quickly, I want you to help me very fast with that. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? The Son of Man. Am. Now, I want you to pick a revelation from this very quickly. The next verse, verse 14. So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Yes, keep going. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Follow, follow, follow. Simeon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Go down. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Verse 18. And I also pay, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, the gate of headsmen, the gates of Boko Haram, the gates of hell, shall not prevail against it. That's where some of you stop. I want to show you verse 19. How will this thing be? Verse 19. And I will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bind in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven that means if the church allows Islam to prevail it's on the front of heaven he said I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it how? how will that be? when men begin to rise up on earth to take their rightful places whatever they endorse here heaven endorse the gate of hell will prevail against the church that has lost its place on earth oh you didn't hear that the gate of hell will prevail against a church that has lost its place on earth God cannot do anything from heaven until men on earth do something God cannot do anything in heaven on this appeal you must swallow. God cannot change his principles to favor you. If we decide that the end of terrorism has come, God's job is to back us up. If we lose anything here on earth, God's job is to lose it in heaven. You don't lose it on earth, heaven will not lose it. You don't bind it on earth, heaven will not bind it. 
is not enough to just pray. It's not enough. Matthew 19, 14. Matthew 19, 14 to 24. Quickly, quickly. Just show you that one and I go. If you don't take your stand in that small sphere where you are and do something, God will not do anything. The condition is still tight to training. Some of you, I know you don't know what to do. <laughs> what is my business? I'm not a politician. What's my business? I'm not a, the CBN governor. I'm not this, I'm not that. It's a lie. God is not looking for them to use. It wasn't Pharaoh that changed Egypt. It was Joseph. He was not a prime minister when he changed it. He changed Egypt before he became prime minister. It was his solution, profit to the issues going on in Egypt, that paved the way for his becoming a prime minister. You don't know from where you are, you could become a minister in this country. You, you, you I'm talking to, can become a governor in your state. You, be, you could become the local government chairman of your local government. If you begin to sit down now and figure out what God has called you to do here. You think if you make me a commission, I will fail? Who will betide me then? My Christianity is fake. We are the light of the world, not the light of the church. We need enough light in the world now. We need enough light in politics. We need enough light in government. We need enough light in economy. We need enough light in media. What is going on? Where did we miss it? God, where did we miss it? Where, 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 where? On the 24th of February, I have a congress I'm holding. If you come there, you won't see pastor talking. You will see a diplomat talking. I'm moving for the amalgamation of parties of similar interests now in the country. You want to fight this nonsense APC and PDP is doing. It's not too much of talk. I'm writing to political parties who are, whose voice are not being heard. It's time to drop your in. Let's form a mega block. I'm not a politician, a pastor. The Bible says, Joseph taught Pharaoh's senators wisdom. I will move a revolution in this nation, yet I won't contest for election. Then you see governors and kings. No, you will watch it happen. I've charted the vision 2025 for this country. And I know it's not going to happen overnight. So I have a short term, a medium term, and a long term go for it. I'm still a young man. Don't worry. You will see me reap what I'm investing now in my 50s. You will see me reap it in my 60s. It's not about today. Because you're seeing yourself as Christian. I'm a Christian. You become religious. A Christian. You don't know you are a light. That's where Christian is. Some of you young ladies and young men here, if I talk to you about your country, you don't know anything about Nigeria. If I talk to you here, the only thing you know is your hairstyle. You know we've won. You know, that's what you You don't know anything about your country. You don't know your cardinal. You don't know your laws, your constitution, nothing. It's an error. Matthew chapter 19 verse 14. Amen. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for such is the kingdom of heaven. Hello. That means, you know when children came to Jesus, they were driving, go, go, go. His nerves are too hot. Don't come. Don't disturb the man. They must say, allow them to come. He said, for such is the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean? It takes childlike hearts to be a kingdom ambassador. It takes childlike hearts. I want to show you one thing that is stopping you. Even young people. I want to show you that. If you kill it, God can use you. You see, when you hear me talk the way I talk, sometimes I talk as I'm bursting into tears and I'm crying. You're wondering, who is paying this man for this headache he's carrying? It's childlike heart that is doing me that thing. I have compassion. I have empathy. I feel this thing going on. I may not be, the hits may not be directly on me. It has not affected my meal. I eat. People cook in their houses and bring from me my house. Good, good food. They go to the market and cook. And they, my fridge is not full. Amen. I eat good food. There was enough people throughout the night of Friday. Slept in a good hotel room. Woke up the following morning. And my table was already fat. With big, plenty of rice and chicken. Amen. I eat and I don't pay for it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't pay for it. I buy here. 
I buy fuel. Fuel my tank. I don't trek. Amen. Yes. But woe betide me if I say like the rich fool. Ha <laughs> ha. My soul rejoice. You have everything. I have a child like that. I don't care about possession. I have compassion. I value compassion instead of possession. So God said to them, Jesus, if you don't have a child like that, no kingdom for you. You would do kingdom work because you have this adult uh, professorial spirit. God does not use men like that. He uses people who are free within the heart. People who are pliable. People who can be touched. People who are easily moved inside. Check David. It was the state of his heart that made God use him. Check Saul. The state of his heart made God reject him. Simple. If your motives, no matter how you want change in this country, if your heart is not pliable, if your heart is not made of fluid, if we cannot shift your heart, if we can't bend you, if we can't bend your will, God can use you. The next verse, you think quickly, oh. And he laid his hands on them and departed from them. Quickly now, let's see. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? <laughs> now behold, okay, verse 17. So he said to him, Why do you call me good? Follow this, this is going to be interesting now. No one is good but one. That is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Quickly. Verse 18. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Yes. Honor your father and your mother and you shall love your neighbor as yourself get get down the young man said to him all these things all these things i have kept from my youth what do i still lack i have kept all the commandments we have christians here who have not told a lie Thank you, sir. We have Christians here who have not kissed before. Thank you, sir. We have Christians here who have never given me the name of an assy. Gossip before. Thank you, sir. Your own is not only deeper life, Christian life. Your own is deepest life. That is, you see a girl who has bonbon and figure eight. As you just look once, you remove your eyes. You say, Father, I wish I can pluck my eyes for seeing such evil right now. I repent for sin, even if it is unconscious. You are that holy. You are that wonderful, sir. It does not take care of Islam. You, you need to get it though. But some of us, we boast in the euphoria that Christianity is about commandments. Keep the commandment. You love everybody. Brother, bless you. Sorry, my mama. Shake it. The match you. And you. Oh, brother. You can match the second one. <laughs> the stuff you tie. Is that. And the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, if they slap you on the right, turn the left cheek. Come on, brother, fulfill the scriptures. <laughs> Amen. You are that good, but one thing thou lackest. It's good to be good. It's good to be holy. It's good to be righteous. I love it. And that's who we all are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Nobody is taking that away from us. No Satan can take it away from you. You are born again, not born against. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. 
You have eternal life. The life of God is in you. You are not going to hell. You are going to heaven. We all know that. But one thing remains. Verse 21. Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, I am surprised at this. That keeping the whole commandment is not perfection. Do you know your Bible at all? If you want to be perfect, keeping your commandments doesn't make you perfect. I don't dare lie. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't womanize. I don't manize. All of them, put them together. All good. But the Bible says, if you want to be perfect, that means, if you want your keeping the commandment to be perfected, because keeping the commandment alone without this one doesn't make you perfect. If you want keeping the commandment to be perfected, there is one thing. Please, how many of you will feel happy if you were born without this arm? That is, you were born, you had left arm, you didn't have the right arm. That's imperfect. Everything is complete, is in order. But you don't have the right arm. So that's an imperfect creation. Is that correct? Is that correct? So God said, with all your commandments, powerful, but not perfect yet. So if you want a perfect life, see the condition. Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But when the young man heard that, when the Christian brother heard that, when the deacon heard it, when the pastor heard it, when the keyboardist heard it, when that beautiful drummer heard it, when that wonderful chorister heard it, you know what she did? What he did? He went away sorrowful. Pastor didn't preach about what God will give us today. He was preaching to us to give God money. This church, man, this also. Pastor didn't preach about how the sickness in my body will be healed today, and I've been sick for some times. This church, I won't come again. I need a place where they can cast out this demon. For he had great possessions. The next verse. I'll show you what these possessions are. You may think it's possession of money. He said, go and sell all that you have. He said, give it to the poor. Then come and follow me. The man said, hard condition. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. I want to clear this for some of you who have been misconstruing it. The rich man here is not a man that God has blessed with money. That's what it means. The rich man, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Is a man who is too rich with self. A man who is too rich with self-conscious living. That's what he's talking about there. Then he talks about entering the kingdom of heaven. He's not talking about going to heaven. Hey. It is hard for a man who is still possessed by possession to enter kingdom service. That's what it means. Pastor, I have an appointment by three. So may she find and make it a come forever. It is hard for such a man to enter. If you send him to just now to go and die for a city, he's telling you, Pastor, hey, you know, I just bought a new container. I need to make sure I service it. There's no time. Uh, don't worry. I will see I can be praying for you guys who are willing to do it. It is hard for such a man to enter kingdom service. Pastor, hey, this week we have line knobs of lectures. Our professors are dealing with us. Why wouldn't they deal with you guys? A man who is pregnant with self-consciousness cannot enter kingdom business. Verse 24, and that's final. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean a rich man who has money. I didn't say he should become poor. He said for a rich man. Any man who is too pregnant with what he has can hardly serve God. Become the kind of Christian who is too talented and too gifted yet too humble to serve. Become the kind of Christian who is too rich. You are the biggest boy in town. Some of you are serving God now because it's convenient. Wait until God gives you one Range Rover. The way you will come to church, you will come two minutes to the dismissal. 
and leave one minute after this misa. The way you will answer pastor's phone, your PA will be the one picking pastor's call. Pastor will call you, PA will pay. Hello, P, how far? Like I'm fine. I thank God I'm not such a hungry pastor. I call you, your PA picks your call. I tell you, give that phone. If you are need your, if you pick my call again, give that phone to my son or to my boy. Even if you are a dango thing. And once they give the phone back to you, I'll first scatter your head. You are a madman. Put that phone on last week and let me talk to you in the presence of all your cabinets. You are a madman. If I ever call you, give your PA phone and I slap you. Amen and amen. I'm not in the class of pastor who beg their members. Honorable, it do real. Honorable, it's a give their church that. Honorable, it do real. It do real. Honorable, you could go tight, Ziggy. You could tight that. No, 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 no. I'll pay my tight next year. Honorable, now, Bambo. Hey man, I am a project at church. I just bury it with your tight. You won't pay. It's where pastors have reduced themselves to beans. If you are a rich man, God has blessed you with beauty as a sister. Use it to serve God. Let your beauty not be slay queen. Who are you slaying? Your own self. You are a handsome subject. You know I'm a very handsome pastor. Amen. Very cute. You know that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. What other life is more worth living than serving God with what I have? I may not be the most intelligent man, but I know God has blessed me with some left of intelligence. What other privilege do I have than to use that intelligence to serve God? I may not be the most eloquent guy on the world in the world, but I know God has blessed me with some little eloquence. What other privilege do I have? than to use it in the service of the kingdom. Some of you consider what you have too much. <laughs> you know who I is. Drop it. Drop that degree. Drop that PhD. Humble. Enter kingdom service. Do ushering in church. Join media. Join music. Join any department. Join training. This is childlike heart. Kingdom service. Romans 14. That's the prayer you're going to pray right now. The prayer to pray. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. See what the kingdom is. It's not eating and drinking. For those of you who like food and those of you who are always thinking church is supposed to provide your daily need God bless me today oh God give me money oh God give me house oh God give he said it's not eating and drinking you have been so pregnant with food and drink that's why you can't win souls so you can't evangelize that's why you can't talk to people about Jesus Last Sunday, someone was telling me about the lady, two ladies who were in church, and they were telling her, I said, hmm, this year, I've dropped out my new resolution. I'll select the service I come from, because I have a lot of academic work to do. That's why you did them, and you graduated, you didn't get a job. You think you can do kingdom service, and when you leave school, you'll be stranded, you get a job automatically. I'm going to do this, I'll do that. God is in heaven calling you a fool. God calls you a fool if your life constitutes a bad, if your whole life is you alone. Eighteen. There is no one like you. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men.
It's not the comments on your Facebook that approves you, sir. The endorsement of nations is your approval. The government of a nation looks and says, Oh, thank God for Reverend Prince. That's the approval. Thank God for that brother. Thank God for that sister. That's the approval. But the approval won't come until there is service in the kingdom. All the people whose names you are hearing today in the world, check kingdom. Stop running away from kingdom service, my brother, my sister. It will do you no good. You may not have all it takes now to be the man God can use from where you are, but submit to the process. There is a training system in this ministry. Go through it. Go through it. This altar is not a place for concocting lies. It's a place for telling the truth as it is. I want to see every young man and woman in this church become a man God can use. That's why I speak the truth. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. That should be your prayer this morning, oh. Pursue the things that make for peace. Pursue kingdom things. Some of you, you need to ask God, God, please help me change my, my personal lifestyle. When I live in my compound, in my street, in my school, wherever I am, let my life bring glory to your kingdom. Some of you need to make a new covenant. Lord, change my giving, change my offering. The men who are buying AK-47 and giving full like heads men, if you know how much one AK-47 costs, when was the last time you sponsored a crusade? When was the last time you said, Pastor, I'm going to give 100,000 for the propagating of the gospel. I don't know what the church needs, but this is how much I'm going to give. Selflessly, when was the last time you did that? A man who is pregnant with the kingdom is always thinking of what to give the kingdom. He's not asking what the kingdom will give to him. Do you know, Abraham Lincoln said, do not ask of what your nation will do for you. Rather, ask what you can do for the nation. A man who is pregnant with the kingdom cannot tolerate not winning souls. If he sees people, that in him starts rising again. He wants to talk to them. He wants to talk to them. He wants to share. If you want to pray, pray and ask God to help you this morning. transformed by the wonders of God's Word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-315-555-747. Princeton Hills Ministries, raising global global leaders. leaders.